Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. More Newcastle near transfer news. The Premier League season has now started. Newcastle won their first game against Nottingham Forest and overall the performance is really good. But especially in the first half, in the final third, Newcastle lacked the killer instinct. And it's shown in the transfer window because all summer long we'll be trying to buy attacking players and we haven't brought any in yet. But the window is still open for a few more weeks and as a result, Newcastle are still actively trying to bring players in. So yeah, uh, all the news regarding that is in this video. If you are new around here, guys, make sure I get down there, hit that subscribe button. We are just about to hit 31,000 subscribers, so if we can get that, I would highly appreciate it, so thank you. And as well as I can also get down there, smash the like button, and finally, question of the day. Who do you think Newcastle's going to sign before the end of this transfer window? At the minute, it still looks like we're trying to get James Madison in. But we'll talk about him in a bit. Obviously, the title is about Bruno and his pal, Lucas Piquetta. So we'll talk about those two as well. But one thing remains, the striker. Who the hell are we going to get up top? So we're going to talk about all of that in this video. There's quite a few things as well surrounding the club that's happening outside of the transfer market. So yeah, a lot of Newcastle news and transfer news in general to talk about today. Without further ado, let's get into it. A couple of things I want to talk about first. This one's on a personal level, but I was sent this yesterday on Twitter. The first Newcastle fan that actually bought a Hawaiian shirt with my face. And honestly, I, I was actually creased when I saw that. So uh, well done. If you ever want anything from me, just you know, give me a message and I'll, I'll sort you out. But uh, I, uh, I really did find that funny, so thank you. In my Nottingham Forest vlog on Saturday, I was actually talking about a kid that was playing on a guitar outside the stadium. He was playing local hero and... I mean, for his age, it's extremely talented. Like, he's really, really good in the guitar. So, yeah, I was talking about him in the vlog. But one thing I didn't realise, actually, is that after the game, he literally pretty much donated a good amount of the money to the food bank, which, I mean, it's class to see. So, yeah, I thought I'd mention that in the video because when I saw that, I was just like, wow. Uh, and a lot of fans in social media and in the media in general have actually been talking about this. So, well done to him. I'm sure a lot more people are going to go listen to him play local hero now and put more money in his... Guitar kiss. And finally, Sir Maxman. Now, obviously, you see my vlogs. He's very interactive with fans before and after games at St. James's Park. After the game against Nottingham Forest, he came out and he actually gave one of the fans a Rolex watch. Now, this isn't the first time he's actually done this. He's done this in two or three different times now when he's came out and gave a fan a watch. Now, sometimes he comes out with these Helios boxes as well and gives away the board game to fans. So, he's always constantly giving stuff away. And obviously, people can look at that how they will. But I do think... Players deserve credit when they actually come out and not acknowledge the fans but come out and actually interact with the fans. I think it's really good. Now, players don't have to do this. I fully stand by that. But when the Castle players come out and interact with fans, or in this case, actually give stuff to fans, I do think they deserve credit. You remember, we are Newcastle United. Everyone at the club is on board. And it's just great to see this fan interaction. So well done. And I will obviously credit it when I see it. So moving away from Nottingham Forest now, that game is now in the past. Next up, Brighton away, who beat Manchester United yesterday. So this game will just be hard no matter what for Newcastle. So it's important we start off well. And if we press like we did against Nottingham Forest, I would fancy Newcastle win this game despite our poor record at the Amex. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, let me know your score predictions down below as well for that match in the next home game, Manchester City. So a lot of work early in the season to be done. But what about the transfers now? Well, let's go through them one by one. And let's begin off with the striker situation at Newcastle United. In my personal opinion, our season at this minute is completely dictated on whether Callum Wilson or Alan St. Maxman picks up a long-term injury. If one of those two is out for about half the season, I think we'd be screwed at this moment of time. We haven't got the squad depth in the front three to really fill the void those two are going to have, so... Yeah, I can't stress how important it is we bring a strike win and potentially a winger as well. One potential player Newcastle could actually bring in is Memphis Depay from Barcelona. Now, there are a few problems around trying to get this deal sorted, but this is a player now that has officially become available from Barcelona on a free signing. I'm not going to talk about Barcelona loads in this video because this video is not about them. But have you seen any news about them in social media? They've got a lot of legal issues about registering players. They've got a lot of financial issues that will benefit our teams. And on a free sign, I think it's a no-brainer. Now, some problems with Depay straight away is, one, the demand for Depay. Every single team will know he's available on a free now. And Newcastle, if we were to go on form, we would definitely not be the only team. And chances are there'll be teams that are either in the Europa League, the Champions League. And it's just going to be a bigger incentive for him to join on our team. 
And then now I think as well as would he fit Eddie Howe's style of play? Now I'm not Eddie Howe, I'm not Dan Ashworth. Would he actually be a player that those two are one at the club? I know he flopped the Manchester United, but his time at Leon was very successful. And on a three, once again, you just can't say no, can you? Whichever team ends up signing the pie, well done, because on a free sign, you're not going to get much better than that, so fair play. So before we talk about Lucas Piquetta, we mentioned James Madison first, because Fabrizio Mauro came out today with some really interesting information. So he's claiming that the Castle will actually go for a third bid for James Madison, despite the fact that Brendan Rodgers himself has said that Madison is not for sale. Now, this is one of the possibilities I said in my last video about Madison that could happen. That Newcastle are going to once again be stubborn and test Leicester's water. Will they actually be willing to lower down to the price? The problem between the two teams is that Leicester want the money up front. Newcastle don't want to pay all the money up front. They want to pay it in storming so they can get other players in this window. So that is a massive hurdle that both teams need to sort of figure out. If this claim is true from Vichu Romano, I actually think this is good news for Newcastle. Just think about it for a sec. If this deal was dead in the water and Newcastle would not go back in for James Madison, it makes no logical sense. Why would they go back in for a player that they know they're not going to get? So that tells me straight away that the club believes themselves that they can get this deal done. It suggests that there's more to this that meets the eye and there's something in there that Newcastle can do that will actually convince Leicester to go, you know what, we won't accept this deal for Madison. So do I think the club should do it? Now, I said in my last video, it doesn't fix the short-term problems, and I stand by that. When Callum Wilson gets injured, James Madison is a phenomenal player, but I'll be, I'll still be terrified in the front three because he's not going to play in the front three. He'll be alongside Joe Linton, and Bruno will be behind him in the midfield three, you would think, unless he changes the formation. So he doesn't really fix the, the issues we have in the front three. He is definitely somebody in there that will create more chances and score more goals because of his phenomenal stats last season, and... Again, he's played in the Premier League for multiple seasons now, so you know what you get with James Madison. But I still think we need a sign of strike. I can't stress how important that is. So as good as Madison would be, I don't want to sound greedy, but he's not the signing we really, really need. So yeah, that's just my personal thoughts about it. I would still definitely say yes to him. Though. I think he's a brilliant player. But we have to sign a striker as well. I can't get over how important that is. Let's talk about the main topic of this video now, Lucas Piquetta. Bruno wants his best mate to join Newcastle, so... Well, first off, with the fact that Madison... Well, we'll see what happens with him, but Newcastle does seem to be wanting to get him feel in, despite the fact that we haven't touched the front three yet. But if Madison goes flat, would Newcastle be willing to go for Lucas Piquetta, a player that has been heavily linked to Newcastle, despite the fact the club has never really went in for him? That's kind of why I don't talk about him much in my videos because it's a player that Newcastle have never actively tried to bring into the club. Bruno, an amazing performance against Nottingham Forest. And, I mean, just imagine those two together with Joe Linton and the midfield three. I, I think every fan would just wet themselves with that one. So, yeah, that's why the interest is there. I can't lie, I've never watched him play before. So, I'm just sitting here and I'm just basing off stats I've seen on the internet. I've never watched him physically play with my own eyes before. But with the fact that how much people talk about him, with how much people big him up, you just know he's going to be a good football player. So yeah, on to Bruno's comments now. So I had a look in the Chronicle. So this is an article on the Chronicle uh, where Bruno was actually directly quoted from the mirror where he was talking about Paqueta potentially coming to the club. And Bruno was just saying how much he would love him to join the club, but it's just completely out of his control. Now, I actually disagree with that somewhat. Uh, now, obviously, at the end of the day, he has nothing in the final say. The club will sign who the club wants to sign. With Bruno's connection to Piquetta directly, this will be someone that the club would know. And I think it would potentially sort of shift them in a the direction if they were unable to bring our players in. I do think he could have a potential say in it. With Lucas Piquetta himself, if Newcastle were upon offering it for Leon to accept, from my understanding, my impression that I've seen on social media, it seems to me like Lucas Piquetta would actually say yes and join Newcastle over our teams. It's not so much that he wants to play Champions League football, he wants to play this, he wants to play that. It's mainly that he wants to play Premier League football. But a bit like Bruno, he's willing to go to the project with what the owners have been telling players behind the scenes. You've seen players come out on social media and explain how within the next couple of seasons he want to reach Champions League football or he want to win silverware. 
I, just, I would just love to hear whether Johan has a telling the players behind these scenes because the ambitions are just out of this world. I mean, all of, almost borderline delusion of how mad the ambition is. It's just so much different from how the club used to be, just so stagnated and just crap, just absolute crap. So it's great to see now with these sort of players in. And the only thing you can say is, would Newcastle go in for them if the opportunity becomes available? That's the question you got to make there. The castle, it's sort of uncertain how much we've got left to spend this window. I've seen a few sort of threads on Twitter where it's people talk about how Newcastle can only spend a certain amount of money, but the actual amount just doesn't seem to be clear at the minute. So we'll see what happens. There's still a few more weeks left. I am confident in the club. The club will do what a club needs to do. They're not stupid. They know that there's still work to be done. Eddie Howe has said on numerous occasions that the club is still looking to bring a couple of players in. The pool of players may be small, but the players... I mean, the club is still trying to get players. That's the most important part. And we'll see what the castle ends up doing in the end. But yeah, uh, still just under a month to go. But time is ticking. The clock is going down now, Newcastle. We've got to start making some moves we want to get these players in. Because if it gets towards the last week, that's when you could consider signings being panic buys. Now, we saw the January transfer window, to be fair. That was only one month. We've seen how the club worked throughout it. It had a, a couple of weeks where nothing was going on, really. But at the end of the window, we signed, I think it was two or three players on the bounce. And we just signed players. And every player, with the exception of Chris Wood, just came in and did their part. And even Chris Wood, to be fair, we were getting wins when he was playing. So he was still playing his part. It's just the goal scoring end where it wasn't really what he expected. But yeah, uh, they've still got a few more weeks left to go. The club can work on the restricted time. The club will get deals done. Don't worry about that at all. It's just who it's going to be. That's the question. And if they're going to succeed at Newcastle. But yeah, anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. I apologise if I guess you expect a bit more from that. But throughout the week, uh, obviously, if the James Madison thing for Richard Oman is true, you will see bids from him come out throughout the week. So we'll be on that in the next couple of days. But anyway, guys, take care. Thank you for watching. Yes, I will. See you all in the next one.